Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. I want to share with you a is in the host. The host. And this, this 23rd number of Psalms shares with us God's provisions, God's care in the life of believers. And as he shares with us God's care and God's concern and compassion in our lives, he starts out in the first four verses of this uh, 23rd number of Psalms by using the allegory of a shepherd. And then he picks up in verse 5 and 6. And then he uses the allegory of a host. Both of these are two things that are very familiar in the life of David, the psalmist of this particular number. He knows about the life of a shepherd because he was one. He was a shepherd boy uh, out in his father's field, tending to the sheep. So certainly he can testify as to what life is like in terms of being a shepherd to sheep. And, uh, but then he, on the other hand, became king. Yes. And as a king, he knew something about being a host. Yes. As a king, uh, there were plenty of occasions where uh, he would have opportunity to have folk come together, guests to come uh, into his house and into his place and to be his honorees. Yes. Um, and so he, he shares with us from these two diverse perspectives, but centering in on the same, same thing. As he shares with us, he, he now is no longer the shepherd. Yes. Not here. Mm -hmm. He's no longer the host. Not in this text. Okay. Okay. In this particular psalm, David, unlike in some of his other psalms, is not asking God for anything. Mm -hmm. He's not coming to God to complain about uh, somebody who's hot on his trails. Yes. He's not coming to God here asking God to deliver him from this set of circumstances of that. No, here he comes to appreciate who God is. Amen. Yes. Amen. Here he comes to recognize God's concern and compassion in his life. Yes. So as we look at him in this text, the, 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 the shoe or the sandal is on the other foot. And uh, God is the shepherd, uh -huh. great shepherd of the sheep. Yes. God is the host, uh -huh. the one who prepares for us, yes. provides for us, yes. make a way for us. Uh -huh. And if any of us have ever been to a restaurant, you, you, you enjoy, you enjoy a good restaurant, don't yes. you? It, it's, it's nice to be able to go to, you know, go to Crown Hometown Buffet, you know, 
the wood rail and all them other places where you can go and pick and choose what you want and just load up your plate. But sometimes, every now and then, uh, it's just good to have a host. Can I get a witness? Well, you can just sit there underneath the table and somebody will come and ask you, uh, do you want water or tea? It, it's good to have a host uh, who, who will make sure that you are well provided for as you sit and dine. They'll come back every now and then. Make sure that everything is okay. Do you like the food? Does it taste okay? Can I get you anything else? Uh, yeah. How about dessert? You want to top that off with some dessert? Uh, do you need that, that glass? And, and, and when you get one, well, you don't even have to ask. Yeah. They see that the water level is down near the bottom, and they'll come, and they'll catch it before it gets to the end, and they'll refill it. Yeah. It's good yeah. to have a host every now and then. Amen. Yes. Uh, my hope yes. is in my host. Uh -huh. yes. God does for us what some of us don't want to do for ourselves. Okay. Yes. When you look at either of these two descriptive uh, allegories that David used in this text, Look at a shepherd, it's a dirty job, it's a menial job, right? You began to smell like the sheep, you began, right? And, and, and you look at a, a host, uh, and, 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 hope, and, and I'll tell you something, uh, you college student or what have you, and you need an extra job, you need some extra money, I'll tell you something, <coughs> waiters can, and waiters can make some extra, they can make some good money on tips. Yes, yes. But, but a lot of folk don't want to be a waiter. They don't want to be a, a, a servant. Right. Yes. But God describes himself as our host. Yes. Mm. 23rd Psalm is one of the best known psalms that many of us have learned from childhood, right? Yes. Right. yes. Uh, but, but God wants to stop by and share with us that we can strengthen our hope in him by understanding this song. Amen. John, John Stott writes this in regards to the 23rd Psalm. He says the scene changes as you come to this fifth verse. He says, I'm, you're no longer outdoors, but indoors. No longer a sheep in a flock, but a guest at a banquet. We can go even further. God's children are his guests because they are his friends. They were not always his friends because if you look at Romans chapter 5, he, he makes it very much clear that we were once at odds with him. We were once not on his side or on his team. Yes, uh, because of Adam's deeds. Uh, yes, uh, because he wanted to do it his way. Sin entered into the world, and, and everyone who was born after that was born into sin. Yes. But now God allows us to come into the tabernacle. God allows us to come into the banquet room. God allows us to come into the holy place as his friends. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, God has done a mighty work. And David just stops here, right here, and he, he puts his kickstand down and he calls right here just to bless the name of the Lord. I don't know how often you do it. I don't know how many times you take out to just simply stop and just say, thank you, Jesus. I, I know, I know there's always something that's going wrong. I know there's always a need that, I, I know there's always something that need repair or replaced. I, I know there's something that always depressed or get on your mind. I know there's always something that keeps you up at night. All right, all right. Come on, 
How often do we pause and think about it? Yes, because if we'll pause long enough, we will realize that if we just meditate on the goodness of God and what God has done for me, what God has done, I don't mean to be selfish about it, but if you think about what he has done for you in your life, yes, uh, you'll begin to realize that your hope is not in this superficial stuff that we've come to trust in. It's not in some of the stuff that we have treasured up and we have built up and we have stood on. I stop by to tell you that moths will come and eat it up. Rust will come and decay it. But my brothers and sisters, my hope is built. Oh yes, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yes, and, and so when we look at this song, and I, I don't mean to hold you too long, but when you look at this song, yes, we began to see some stuff just began to jump out at us. Yes, yes uh, if we pick up at verse 5, yes, uh, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes. And I want you to see something here in, in this text, in these just a few short verses. Uh, God is a preparer for us. God is a provider for us. Yes. And God is a protector for us. Yes. And we can just go on yes. with that. But, but, yes. but my brothers and sisters, can I work with those for a minute? Yes. Uh, you prepare a table before me. God is our preparer. I stop by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's not in your might. It's not in your strength. It's not of who you are or where you went to college, but I stopped by to let you know it's because of who you got on your side. It's because of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's because of your hosts that you're here today. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, God ensures that every day that you go to the table that there's food on the table. God ensures uh, that when you open up the refrigerator to get some OJ, there's some OJ in the refrigerator. It's God who is making a way for you. It's God who is supplying every one of your needs. God is setting the table. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, when we buy ourselves, we don't go through the hassle of setting the table. We don't put no silverware down. We don't put the formal napkins and all of that stuff down. No, we just sit down and we eat. Take care of business. But, 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 but when we got guests, when we got company, yes, I, uh, we, we, we'll go through all the formalities and so forth and we'll put a, a, a tablecloth on the table and we'll, we'll put some silverware and make sure we got a knife and a fork and a spoon. Uh, yes, uh, because we have guests coming over. God prepares a table for us. We could be thankful enough that he just simply give us a steak and potatoes. Uh, we could be thankful enough that he just put gas in our car. We could be thankful enough that he continued to give us a car. We could be thankful enough that he had a roof over our head. We could be thankful enough that he put air in our lungs. That's just shocking news right there. Yeah. Yeah. But in addition to giving us food to eat, he prepares a table for us. God is our preparer. So my brothers and sisters, as you enter into this next week, and as you go into this next month, whatever concerns and so forth that we have in life, we worried about whether or not we'll have enough money to pay all the bills that keep coming in our mailbox. I want you to understand that God is your preparer. Yes, I put your hope in Him. He can do it for you. Yes, continue to trust in Him. He can do whatever it is that you're doubting, whatever it is that, that you're concerned about, God can do it for you. Yes, yes. He, is our, he is our preparer. Yes. Not only is he our preparer, 
but he is our provider. Yes. 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 God gives us provisions in our lives. David affirms that God's provisions for his guests are both constant and abundant. Yes. Yes. Uh, the constancy of God's provision means that God's people have them in every situation and circumstance. Right. Yes. yes, God provides for us. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 I know. I, I, I know that that sometimes you know we, you know, feeling pretty good, got a little money in our pocket, <laughs> and uh, you know we can. Order whatever we want on the menu. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been to one of them restaurants? Mm -hmm. And they give you a menu and ain't no prices on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you broke, that's an indication you ought to get up and leave. <laughs> that's it. Uh, you're going to get a surprise at the end. Oh. I've been in one. They give you a surprise at the end. Oh. But God wants you to know that He is. I provide. Yeah, yeah. And God allows us to sit down at his table. He gives us a menu and it ain't got no price. So it's already taken care of. It's already paid for. It, it's already settled. You don't have to worry about it. God done fixed it for you. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, he prepares a table. He's our provider. I remember Dr. E. Dr. E. Edward Jones was on the turnpike. And he was going on through the turnpike, and uh, and, and as he come up to the toll, he he, he saw a man uh, who was waving him on, uh, but he hadn't paid his toll. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, uh, and he kept on coming to the turnpike. He kept on slowing down, and the Mexican man kept waving him on, uh -huh, uh -huh. but he hadn't paid his toll, so he kept slowing down. And so he finally gets up to the toll booth, and he stops, and the man says to him, "Didn't you see me?" Waving you on, and he drives that he drives that turnpike all the time, and he knows he's supposed to pay. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, and so he pays that man. No, never mind. He stops, and the man was kind of you know frustrated that he stopped, and he said, "Did you see me waving you on?" He says, "I gotta pay my toll." He says, "Well, there was a car ahead of you." And he said that the, the man coming behind me is Dr. E. Edward Jones, and, 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 and here is his toe. I waved you on because your toe is already taken care of. My brothers and sisters, God has already paid your toe. That's why you're here. That's why you eat. God is our provider. Yes. Mm. Uh, but but, but look, let me show you something. Uh, we, we, we noticed uh, when we were talking about the sheep uh, that there are sometimes uh, wolves that will get after a sheep. Yes, they are. There's some wolves that will sometimes uh, try to devour them and make them their supper. Yes, uh, and, and, and we get now here to the place where he is talking about the host. He brings us out of the field, places us in the guest room, uh, but there are still enemies even in the guest room. It's right there in the text. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, uh, that, 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 that's still there's still enemies, even if you come out of the field into the house. There's still enemies. Yeah, see, he concludes uh, talking about the sheep uh, with, 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 with the idea of death. Uh, he talks about death. He concludes, uh, yes, immortality uh, with the idea of the shadow of death. Uh, yes, uh, as we walk through the valley. Now he comes here. And he says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And I stop by, I want to drop this on you so that you can go home with hope in your life, hope in your heart, inspiration to make it another day, an inspiration to have dreams in front of you, inspiration to know that you can take it, you can make it. Yes, it's right here in the text. See, God don't promise us that we won't ever have an enemy. God don't promise us that there won't be somebody who will be hating on you. God don't promise us that there will, won't be somebody who will be putting their foot out trying to trip you. God don't promise us uh, that there won't be somebody uh, who will be laying a trap for you. Uh, God don't promise us uh, that there won't be somebody uh, digging a 
thing is, is that just because somebody don't like you, don't mean it will stop you. Yes, yes. Can I say that again? Yes. Uh, too many of us have determined our destiny uh, by who like us. Uh, too many of us have determined our destiny by who's in the presidential seat. Uh, so many of us have determined our destiny. Uh, yes. Uh,
God says here in the text yes. that, that you can wipe away mm -hmm. tears from your eyes. Yes. God is saying here in the text that, that you can get up now and walk upright. Yes. Yes. Because the Lord anoints our head yes. with oil. Yes. Yes. Oil of joy. Oil of gladness. I know, I know sometimes life can get you down. I know that sometimes our circumstances can, can bring you to your knees. I know that sometimes, yes. sometimes, mm -hmm. like that old song, joy and pain, like sunshine and rain. Maybe somebody know what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes life can, can do that to you. Life can sometimes bring you down. But, but I stop by to tell you that God will instill within us a new hope. Yes. A new dream. Mm -hmm. A new goal. Mm -hmm. If we would just trust him. Trust him. If we would just have faith in him. If we would just believe in him. And just hold on to God's unchanging name. Yes. He'll do it for you. He'll take you from where you are to where you need to be. Yes. God will fill us with joy and gladness. Yes. Listen, listen, listen. He says, my cup runs over. God gives me so much joy that I can't contain it. God gives me so much joy that I can't, I can't keep it to myself. Catch this. When God began to do a new thing in your life, when God began to work in your life, when God began to bring rays of sunshine and hope in your life, and don't try to contain it. Don't, don't try to bottle it up and package it and keep it for yourself for a rainy day. No, you don't have to do that. Yes, uh, God will allow our cup to overflow so that we can share it with somebody else. There's somebody else who got a frown. There's somebody else who been crying. There's somebody else, uh, yes, on the verge of a nervous breakdown. There's somebody else, uh, yes, who, who feel hopeless and helpless. There's somebody else who's frustrated. Uh, don't try to keep it to yourself. Let them know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You've been trying to figure out how it is that I got a smile on my face. You trying to fit, you know what I've been going through. You know my circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. There folk on your job. They know what you're going through. They know what you've been through. They know that you done lost this relative. They know that you done lost this son of God. They know what you've been through. But what they can't understand and what they don't know is how it is that you still walking upright. What they don't know is how This joy, the joy that I had. Oh. oh, the world didn't give it to me. Yeah. Yes, uh, and the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and you can just run with that right there, yeah. and you can say this peace, this peace. you can say this love. Uh, leftovers. Uh, God provides leftovers. 
my cup runs over. Yes. You remember Jesus feeding those folk? Nobody remembered to bring uh, lunch uh, for that size. As a matter of fact, they didn't even know the size of the crowd would even grow that large. Uh, just folks start tagging along. Folks start lining up, getting in the group. Go through this town. Folk would get in the group. Yes, uh, but no problem for Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, bring me that little boy's lunch. Uh, bring me those fish and loaves. Uh, yes, Jesus says, sit him down. Uh, And after he got done grouping them up and sitting them down, yes, uh, he made sure that everybody was fed and full. Uh, yes, uh, but then he told them uh, to drive the point home. Uh, I want you to go and gather up the fragments. Uh, and after they had gotten done gathering up the fragments, uh, they had basketfuls of fragments. Uh, and, and my brothers and sisters, I want you to know, God and give you some overflow in your cup. Runs over. Uh, I got to sit down now. Yes, uh, but can I just say a little something about verse 6 before I sit down? Yes, uh, he says, surely. Surely. I'm getting excited right about here. Yes, uh, he says, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How many of us can say that we are continuing to receive after the event is over? After the wedding reception, we're still full. How many of us can say that after the bridal shower, we're still full? After the banquet, we're still full? Not many of us. But God will work it out in our lives uh, to ensure that our lives are still benefiting from his blessings uh, in the days to come, in the weeks to come, in the months to come. We'll still be benefiting uh, from the blessings that God placed in our lives. Mm. Long after those other benefits come to an end. This event hosted by the Lord, unlike any other, has eternal benefits. Look at it. Let me, can I show you the promise of his provision? He said, the promise of his provision is, is goodness. See, God will provide us with his goodness. Uh, yeah, when we feel like there's nothing but sadness and sorrow in our life, when we feel like there's nothing but devastation and defeat in our life, God will come by, knock on our door, and he will give us a visitation of, of his goodness. Listen, the promise of his provisions of goodness in our lives, he said, surely goodness but then there's the promise of his protection in our lives. Uh, he follows up goodness uh, with mercy. Uh, and you do know that mercy is withholding uh, the rightful judgment uh, that we deserve. Yes, uh, we deserve uh, to be slaughtered. We deserve, uh, yes, to be punished uh, for our sins. We, we deserve uh, this and that. Uh, but God says that surely goodness God gives us the promise of his protection in our life. Uh, yes. yes. And, and, and listen here. When he, not only does he promise that we'll have, uh, yes, provisions and protection in our lives, uh, but he says uh, that they'll be walking uh, around, uh, yes, uh, following us. Uh, wherever we go, they'll be tagging along, uh, yes, over our shoulder. Uh, yes, uh, wherever we are in life, uh, goodness and mercy uh, will be right there with us. Uh, yes, uh, he's just that kind of a God. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, uh, they, 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 they endure. Yes, uh, how long do they endure? He says it right there in the text. All the days of my life. Yes, uh, and, then he, and then he gives us this bonus. He says, uh, yes, he gives us the promise of his presence. When you ain't got nothing else, thank God for his presence in our lives. He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. 
Yes, the promise of his presence. So when we ain't got nothing else, yes. God says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. When you don't have nothing else, you can have the promise of his presence that he will go with us. Yes, yes. How long? I'm glad you asked. Yes, uh, for the length of days, uh, however long you are, are existing. Uh, listen, listen. He, he, he ended the first section uh, in mortality. He, he ended the first section with the shadow of death hanging over our heads. Uh, but he ends this section uh, with eternity in our view. He ends this section uh, with forever. He ends this section uh, with eternity because every believer uh, 